For this lecture, I want to show how simple RAC can be. Make no mistake, RAC is complicated technology and phenomenally difficult to get right, but I do like to try and demystify it. Now, with that goal in mind, I want to teach you how to convert a single instance database to RAC, and I think I can do it in 10 minutes with minimal downtime. My starting point is a perfectly normal database, single instance stored in a file system. My end point will be a two-node clustered database stored in ASM. The prerequisite is that I'm assuming that grid infrastructure has already been done. We actually covered that in previous lectures. So let's take a look at the structures. The data files. Other minimum I could get away with. Just four data files. System, sysorgs, users, and undo. Clearly not a production database, but good enough for these demonstration purposes. If you look at the redo log, we see that my online redo log consists of just two members, one member for group one, one member for group two, also on file system storage. And finally, my control file. Just one copy of the control file, also on the file system storage. So what's the process to convert this to rack? First, I have to move the database to shared storage. Uh, there are many ways to do this. I'll use a technique that I believe minimizes the downtime. Secondly, we have to prepare the instance for clustering. That's actually very simple indeed. It's nothing more than changing a couple of parameters. Then shut down startup. That should be the only downtime. Seriously, the downtime for conversion to rack will be measured in less than a minute. Finally, prepare the database for additional instances. That means adjusting the physical structures, adding threads of redo, adding undo table spaces. Having done that, we're ready to go. We go to the second node, we create the second instance, we start it up, job done. So let's go. We'll check the time. It is now 17.47 and 9 seconds. The clock starts now. Let's see if I can do the conversion in 10 minutes or less. The first step was to move the database to shared storage. Now, there are many ways to do that. The technique I'm going to use, I believe, is pretty fast. I'm going to use the alter database move data file command. I've written a script that will do that for me, which is just four move commands. Also database, move data file, file system name, to shared storage on ASM name. So I'll run that script. And that will take a couple of minutes to run. Clearly, if your database is many terabytes, this is going to take many, many hours. That really should not be an issue because there's zero downtime while this is going on. Remember, moving data files is an online operation, assuming you're using release 12C. If you're not using release 12C, if you're on a 10G version, uh, then you'll have to use another technique. I would normally do it with uh, RMAN. I would do an RMAN restore. Uh, that can also be done with minimal downtime, provided you're using hot backups. RMAN restore and then recover the archival logs that were generated during the process. An alternative technique, rather than using an RMAN restore, is to use that wonderful RMAN command backup as copy database, followed by switch database to copy. But whatever technique you use, the downtime is going to be pretty minimal. The technique I'm using here, the downtime is really, really small. You'll see there'll just be one shutdown startup and that will be done. So data files should now be on shared storage. Let's just check that. And there they are. Then I need to get the online redo log across to shared storage. There are several ways of doing that. I happen to think that the easiest way is to create new log file groups and drop the old ones. So I'll add one log file group and add a second log file group. Switch into that new group, switch into the new group and 
force a checkpoint. And then drop the old groups. Alter database drop log file group one and drop log file group two. Confirm that my online log now is on shared storage, and there it is. The remaining item that is not on the shared storage is, of course, the control file. Now, that I can't move without downtime. To minimise the downtime, what I'm going to do at this point is adjust the parameter, the control file's parameter. I'll actually move it later on after making the other changes, which I'll do right now. So, edit my parameter file. You'll notice that I'm using a static p file uh, there's no technical reason not to use an sp file it's just that i think it is a bit more explanatory if i do it with the p file so my control file when i've moved it will not be on the file system it will be on the disk group and now i need to add the two critical parameters that will enable rack firstly cluster database equals true because that defaults to false secondly Instance number. Instance number is a required parameter in a rack environment. And that concludes the preparation of the instance. So, what do I do next? Shutdown startup. So, a clean shutdown. Strictly speaking, doesn't have to be a clean shutdown, but best practice, I think, would say to do that. Now, while the database is shut down, I'm going to move the control file. I'm going to use the ASM CMD utility to use that, to do that. Again, it's a matter of preference, of personal preference. There are many techniques you could use for copying the control file to shared storage. I just happen to think that ASM CMD is probably the easiest way to do it. So that's got it across now. And then start up. So it will take a few seconds for the instance to build in memory. And remember, the only significant change to the instance was that one parameter, cluster database true. Right now, we will be attempting to mount the control file from the ASM disk group, done it. And now we will be attempting to locate, to open the thread of redo and locate the data files and open them as well. And that's done it. Now, check the status of this database. Select instance name, host name status from GV dollar instance. And hey, it's clustered. It's open. This is a clustered database. But it's a cluster of one instance, which isn't much use. Note, though, that downtime is now over. And the downtime really was only a minute or two. So the next step, I've done the shutdown. I've done the startup. I now need to prepare the database for the additional instances. I need to add a thread of redo. I need to add an undo table space. So first, the thread of redo. Alter database, add log file thread 2 on the shared storage. Then, because every thread needs at least two groups, add a second one. Then, enable it as a public thread. The undo table space. Create undo table space, undo 2, data file on the shared storage, size 50 megabytes. The final step is to create the second instance. So on my second node over here, this is the node called iron2. I need a parameter file. Easiest way to get a parameter file is to copy the parameter file over from the other node. So scp from iron1, my parameter file across named init jw2.aura, and then edits. I need to change just one parameter, and that's the instance number. In the rack environment, every instance must have a unique number. All the other parameters can be the same. Well, let's fire it up and see if it works. So we connect to sysdba. My instance is, of course, idle and start up. So at this point, my second instance should be building in memory on this second node.
and at this point attempting to mount the, sh the control file. It will be taking a shared lock on the control file because it will have started up in cluster mode. And now open that second thread of redo, which we just created, and then open or select an undo table space, and then open the data files. Done. And there I am with the two node cluster, one instance on each node, both open. And how long did that all take? I make that about eight minutes. So I've converted my database from single instance to rack in under 10 minutes. There are, of course, a few steps to do afterwards. Um, but note throughout this, the downtime was probably less than a minute. I didn't time the downtime, but I believe it was less than a minute. I can add more instances, as many more instances as I wish, with no downtime at all. Of course, there is some additional work to be done. I need to register the database in the cluster registry. I need to convert to an SP file, put the SP file in shared storage. I need to set up my service preferences. I need to configure session service failover. There's all the configuration of the rack to make it work the way I want to do it. But it's done. And throughout that whole process, what was the impact on users? It was minimal, probably less than a minute's downtime.